So today we're going to take a look at um, a little diagram called a pedigree chart. And uh, sometimes students will be like, oh, you like dog food? Well, I mean, the idea of pedigree does come from people who breed dogs because they're concerned about family lineage. In the case of a pedigree chart, we're looking at the family lineage of a single trait. Um, typically, these are used for inherited diseases um, because those are the ones people are really concerned about seeing what the probability of their child having a certain disease would be. But we can also use them to show the inheritance of other traits too, like hair color or eye color um, or something like that. So basically, um, the charts that we're going to see, that we're going to draw, are going to be of traits of families. Um, there's two shapes on the chart. Circles stand for females. And squares stand for males. Pretty easy. The next thing that we're going to see is um, the shading of the squares. And that shows an individual's genotype. What is on their genes, which then determines what you know their phenotype is, whether or not they have the trait. So if you have a blank circle or square, that is going to mean that person is homozygous dominant for that trait. Typically, it means that they don't have the trait because a lot of our inherited diseases are um, recessive. We could have somebody who's hetero that has the information on their genes, but they don't show it. And then we have our people who are homozygous recessive, and um, they then usually have whatever that trait is. Um, the people who are heterozygous, those kind of in-betweeners, they also um, sometimes are called carriers because they have information on their genes that they don't actually show. The first trait that we're going to look at is the trait of sickle cell anemia. Um, it's a very common trait in certain parts of the world, um, particularly in Africa, because interestingly, sickle cell blood cells protect people against malaria. Um, so we have the dominant trait is a normal red blood cell, and the recessive trait is a sickled red blood cell. Normal red blood cells, happy, squishy inner tubes, sickled blood cells kind of look like crunchy croissants. They don't carry oxygen very well. So let's say we got two people here. We got a male and a female. We're going to call them grandma and grandpa. And each of them carries the sickled cell information, but they don't actually have sickle cell anemia. They have four children. Notice the lines connecting to them. Um, the youngest is a carrier. The middle, or sorry, that, that second daughter there has it, and then we have a carrier. Now, three of the kids get married or have children with somebody, and the youngest has a daughter. Then that second daughter there uh, has two children, a female and a male, and the oldest has one male child. That male is also a carrier, so they have it and they uh, don't show the information but they carry it on their DNA. Um, and nobody else in the family really winds up having it. So grandma and grandpa are both carriers, one daughter gets the disease, two sons wind up carriers, and then we have children that get the information from their parents here where uh, the youngest grandchild wouldn't have it at all, even though their dad's a carrier. So we can see how that information travels down the family. Let's talk about a trait that's not as much of a bummer as sickle cell anemia, which is, you know, genetic disease, not fun to have. Let's look at hair color. So red is a trait that in a previous video we talked about is a very, very recessive trait. So we basically got three options with red. You can either have red hair, which means you have recessive red alleles, two of them on your red blonde gene. You can carry a recessive red that's covered up by a blonde, or you can have no red on your DNA at all. So let's say that we have a red-headed grandpa, and he has some children with a not red-headed grandma, who doesn't know that she carries red on her DNA? They have three children, one boy, or one girl and two boys. The oldest daughter, no red hair. Middle son, bright red hair. And youngest son is a carrier. Notice everybody in their family has at least one red because that's all grandpa has to give. Now, the oldest daughter has children with a male. And boom, their firstborn daughter has bright red hair. 
and their son does not. Where did all of that red hair come from? Did Grandpa give it to her? No. Grandpa gave red to Mom. Mom gave red to her. But hey, where did that other half of that red come from? Oh, Dad's a carrier, and he didn't know it. He gave half red. It was hiding in both of their DNA, so now that daughter has red. Uncle didn't give it to her either. That would be some explaining to do. Now, the youngest son has a daughter who also has red hair. He's a carrier. The lady he has a child with is a carrier. They get their information from their parents. They pass it on to their child. And then finally, that middle son who has red hair has a daughter who does not have red hair, but she carries it. So because her dad has it and her grandpa had it, she could pass it on if she finds someone to have a child with who has red hair. Okay, so the next thing is a little bit more complicated. It's called an X-linked trait. And these are traits that are carried on the X chromosome. Um, keep in mind, males are XY, so they have one X, one Y. Females have two Xs. So what this means is that for males, if they get a, a trait, if they get an allele for something on their DNA, they're going to get that trait no matter what. Um, so there are certain things that are carried on the X chromosome. We're going to look at, um, color vision and they, you know, they're going to be colorblind if they get a colorblind allele because they only get one. Um, with females though, they got two chances. So female X chromosomes follow our standard rule of dominance, but with males, uh, they only got one shot. So they either have color vision or they don't have color vision. They don't get a dominant to cover up a recessive potentially because they only have one X chromosome, uh, which means that there are certain X-linked um, issues, X-linked -X um, alleles that are more common in males, one of those being um, people who are color blind. So uh, having standard color vision is um, a more common trait. Um, we have that's a dominant trait. So we're going to say big B here, right? Dominant is color vision. And then um, if you are colorblind, then you have a recessive, a weaker trait. So now let's go from the bottom up. Let's build a pedigree the other way. So let's say that you are looking at life and you're like, hey, what in the world's going on here? I'm colorblind. This isn't cool. Well, first thing, that means that your mom had to be at least a carrier. And if you're a girl, your dad has to be colorblind because he only had one X to give you and you had to get two X's to be colorblind. Um, moving on up here, we can see that grandpa was colorblind and grandma wasn't. So that's why mom is a carrier. Um, then if we look at uncle, he can potentially not be colorblind at all because grandma gives him his ex, which is what's probably going to happen for him because he gets his wife and grandpa. And then um, your aunt carries that colorblind allele. So now she has a daughter, gives her colorblind to her daughter, and dad doesn't. And then here if they have a son and she gives her one ex that's colorblind to her son, now he's going to be colorblind. So grandpa gave it to mom, mom gave it to son. It's not that grandpa gave it to the son. Uh, grandpa passed it down through mom and then mom gave it to her son because she gave one X, she gave her colorblind X to that son. He only has one X, so he is colorblind. So males tend to be colorblind more often because um, it is that X linked trait. Now, um, pedigrees can help us to track traits and help make sense of how we inherited certain traits in our family. But the next thing that we need to learn about are Punnett squares, and Punnett squares help us to predict um, our inheritance.